I was asked to uh, bring people up to date on the county, and uh, I've got like 10 minutes, and that's more than enough time. It's potholes, 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 that's it, I'm done. Um, I'll just mention a few things going on at the county, um, and uh, then, you know, if there's time, we, you can ask some questions, but um, I think last time I spoke, you know, obviously we were really in the middle of COVID, things obviously look a lot better right now, so uh, hopefully, knock on wood, it will stay that way. Things are semi back to normal, which is great. Um, I think s some of the big issues we're dealing with, um, I mean, roads, of course, are, uh, it's always the top pot, top item that we, we hear from people on. Um, uh, Dan and I were talking and, you know, it's, it's kind of a thankless job because everyone obviously always is complaining about the roads and there's no money to fix them, which is, is a problem. Uh, revenue is, is a huge issue in our county. So we've got uh, essentially 450 miles of county roads. Um, about half of them are in my district, in the South San Diego County District. And unfortunately, um, if you've ever driven much beyond Ridgemark, you'll know that probably 90% of them are in pretty terrible condition. Uh, not to mention a lot of roads around here are not in the greatest shape, like parts of Fairview or, or Union or you pick, a, you pick a county road and it's probably not in the greatest shape. Um, when you figure it's about, they say about a million dollars per mile to really fix a road, pave it, et cetera, you can imagine if you've got 450 miles, not all of which have to be fixed, but a lot of them, um, that's a lot of money. So the county right now, um, you know, we have three primary sources of funding for roads. Uh, SB1, which is state money that comes from gas funds. Uh, uh, Major G, which we all passed back in 2018, uh, half of which is for 25, half for local county roads uh, and city roads, um, is certainly helping, but it's, it's, you know, certainly not enough. And unfortunately, as we get another, another couple of years here, most of that money coming in from Measure G, that 1% sales tax is all gonna be going toward uh, 25. And so there'll be even less money there. We also have an enterprise fund, which is money that comes from the landfill. So that's what has paid for uh, repaving Best Road, for example, or John Smith, or parts of Fairview that came from uh, landfill money. Um, we are actively looking for other places to get money. We just got some emergency funding, quite a bit of money to deal with some of the, the road damage that took place uh, last year at the end of January with the huge storm. Um, for example, that will fix the culvert uh, that is blown out way down on New Idria. Um, so there's that money we're looking for. We're trying to get money from the uh, state as well as from the federal infrastructure bill. And um, we're also looking at ways to maybe some more creative financing, some bonding or stuff that we can do to try to uh, get enough money together to deal with a lot of these roads uh, all at once. So that's kind of what's going on, but there's just uh, never enough money. The other problem we have is that we have an ongoing problem with a, a, uh, bringing in new people to do the road work. We used to have probably five road crews in the county, one of which was totally devoted to South Samuel County. Uh, you know, 24 seven, they were down there. We now have roughly about one and a half road crews to cover the whole county. So you can imagine how tough it is to stay on top of uh, even just the potholes. Um, the problem is the same that I think all businesses have. Um, you know, we're competing with Granite, uh, Granite Rock, Don Chapin, they're paying more dollars than the county can afford. And, uh, you know, so it's tough. And so we're trying to work very hard to attract more people, we're bumping up the rates and things like that. So that's something on roads. 25 for those of you who might be interested. Um, it's moving forward, but unfortunately, the way things work with Caltrans, uh, we're probably looking at I believe it's probably six or seven years before you're gonna really see significant progress in 25. 
you will see the turbo roundabout. I know all of you have been wanting that turbo roundabout at 156 and uh, 25. Uh, before, it, before you blame the county, that's a strictly Caltrans's deal. So that's gonna be going in, uh, I think toward the end of this year. Um, seems like a big waste of money, but anyway, it's happening. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, some, of, some of the other issues that we're dealing with, uh, I mean, we have the same issues that you see throughout the state. We have obviously there's big housing issues, there's huge demand, and yet, um, you know, a lot of people in the community are not happy with with uh, the residential that's going in, particularly with 25 and the traffic. Um, but on the other hand, uh, the state is pushing hard to uh, try to get more housing. Um, since I've been on the board from the beginning of last year, we actually haven't had a, a, a project come before, a residential project come before us. Uh, although we're still dealing with, you know, as Santana gets built out, um, there is a project adjacent to where Quail Hollow and Oak Creek are off of Enterprise. It's legal property. That's gonna start going in here in the next few months. Um, although that was approved actually right before I got on the board. Uh, there's some other smaller things going on, but um, housing is a big deal. And of course, affordable housing is, the, is a huge issue. So we're trying to see if we can push when there is housing, get more affordable housing. And, and that's always been a struggle. Um, homeless is a big issue, like everywhere. Um, we, we have a homeless shelter. We're also looking at trying to purchase uh, a building out there that's near where the homeless shelter is that will give us more room for more homeless. Um, and also, um, you know, have an, a place for them to go. Um, the way the laws are, um, you can't move homeless out of certain areas, let's say along the riverbed, unless you have a place for them to go. Whether they wanna go there or not uh, is another thing, but you still have to have a place. So, you know, we're working on, we are working on that as well. Um, a big issue right now is we have um, ARPA money, American Rescue uh, Act money, came from the, uh, the bill, the big federal bill that was passed last year and um, the county received or is will have received 12.2 million dollars give or take which for our county is a lot of money um, the city also received a significant amount of money so we are in the process of still trying to figure out how best to spend that money we we would like to see the the bulk of it going to more infrastructure it can't be spent on the roads um, but it can be spent on things like broadband um, and, and other issues, wastewater treatment and other areas like that. We're looking at, we've already allocated some of it for things that are COVID related. That's part of what you can spend money on. Um, but we're also looking at uh, areas like we're putting in this uh, Riverview Park, which is just below the high school there. And, there, uh, and if you haven't gotten familiar with that, that's a really a positive thing that the county is involved in. Uh, it's going to be this uh, huge park just you know behind the where the old football stadium was down in the river area and eventually it will all be connected with uh, heading down toward the historical park uh, past Tres Pinas and all uh, and all the way over to San Juan Batista that's long term but there's a lot happening there we're looking at maybe spending some of that ARPA money on 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 the park as well as possibly this homeless shelter I was talking about, um, also possibly broadband and other areas. So that's something that we're, we're looking at right now. Um, you know, uh, San Houston Reservoir, that's a favorite topic I hear. People say, why the hell can't I fish there or whatever? We're still dealing with zebra mussels. It's, it's, all, it's all tied up in the federal government and, you know, it's just kind of a mess. Um, there's still hope that that's going to get, they're going to get eradicated. Um, there's questions about where that money will come from, um, but it has to be approved by the federal government before we, before we can do 
anything. The other thing that a lot of people don't realize, San Houston Reservoir is part of the whole water system, San Diego Water Agency system. So you, you can't simply just drain it. Um, and, and so that's part of the issue there. Uh, in my district as well, Clear Creek, um, people are still hoping that Clear Creek, Clear Creek will get opened again for uh, bikers, uh, and that's something that we're we're working on, but it's complicated because it's uh, the EPA is involved federally. Um, and what other things? There's, I mean, it's endless. When you get in this kind of a job, you get in, in the middle of things you never thought you would. You know, water issues. Uh, whether you're dealing with the water problem that Stonegate or Trespinos or the landfill. The landfill is a very hot issue, continues to be a big issue in our county, of course, and whether we're going to expand that or not. Um, we just recently, as a board, we voted not to allow them to um, waste solutions to put in a, uh, a temporary transfer station, which would have uh, allowed them to continue bringing out a county trash for the moment uh, as of the end of this month so just in a couple weeks all out of county trash will will cease to come into our county um, that's temporary potentially if we do if we do agree to go forward with an expansion then then some of that may come back but that's where we are right now we're waiting for a, an EIR that will come out probably we're not exactly sure, but I'm guessing sometime maybe this summer, um, which will give the board alternatives to look at uh, as to whether or not we're gonna go forward with an expansion or not. It may be at, at a smaller level or it may be not at all. I, I talked to this group before about this. The problem is if we don't expand, we basically have 15 years of space at that landfill for the county trash so if we don't expand um, waste solutions that runs it will eventually they'll go away the county won't be in a position of running their cells it's very expensive to run a landfill and so that landfill will likely get shut down in in roughly 15 years or so so then what we would have to do as a county is transfer our trash out of the county like many are transferring into our county and that would um, obviously rates will go up significantly so we're kind of between a rock and a hard place there. Um, a, a landfill like ours is a significant asset to the communities. There's very few around the state, but not surprisingly, a lot of people are not real thrilled about you know the the this trash coming from out of county. So it's that's going to be a tough decision and, and one of the the big decisions that we're going to be making once that EIR comes out here in a short amount of time. Um, that's kind of give you a quick overview of what's going on. Uh, any time for any questions or? Yeah, absolutely. All right, any questions allowed for our in-county trash? And we have reached that 15 year mark. So basically, until the, the landfill is expanded, uh, no more out-of-county trash can come in. Oh, okay, so it's over with now? It, it will be over with as of, uh, technically, I think it's March 30th. So okay. in, uh, within a couple of weeks, we're, it's going to stop, but again, that's temporary potentially. But that's for the t until expansion takes place. That will be the end of it until you know that a determination is made. Okay. Right. <clears throat> What's the income from the landfill? It's a little complicated, but it's because some of it goes to this enterprise fund, which is deals with the roads. Uh, some of it just actually goes directly to the county. Best I can tell is somewhere in the range of, you know, two to three million dollars a year. So it's it's significant when we don't have enough money, but it's not, you know, it's. I don't think the decision should be driven strictly because of that, you know, that revenue. Um, now, if if the expansion takes place, there's some renegotiation involved, and in the and what we receive will will improve. So, but right now it's in that, I think it's in that two to three million dollar range. Um, you, you know, the big problem is, is. You're talking about total, some goes to the road and some goes to Yeah, the road. and, I, and I, I, I'm not sure how much of that is broken. I'm not positive about if that's total or that's separate from the roads, to be honest with you. But it, it's, 
it's not a, an enormous number, but it's a significant number. Some, of the, but there's other issues involved. For example, there is a uh, part of the landfill a, many years ago. It was a they took hazardous waste. The city had a dumping site for hazardous waste there. That if as part of the agreement, if the expansion takes place, a waste solution who runs the landfill is responsible for closing that and, and eliminating that as a problem. If we don't expand and waste solutions goes away, that's going to be a liability to the city and to the county to deal with, and that's a big issue. So there, there's a lot of issues there that you know are going to cost the county money if we close close the landfill down. Um, not to mention, like I said, it'll be more expensive for the residents to ship it out of town. So if we shut it down, I'm sure in 15 years people will say, why the hell did you do that? But um, like I said, it's, 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 uh, it's kind of between a rock and a hard place, I think. But um, hopefully what we can do is come to some kind of a compromise position where there's some, this would be my point of view, Maybe there's some expansion, but it's but it's much more limited, and we don't have to see as much county waste coming in from out of town. But anyway, we'll see. Paul, Bob, does the county still employ or, or pay for a lobbyist? Right we do. We actually, when when I got on the board, we did not, but we we approved a lobbyist last year, and uh, so we do have a state lobbyist. And um, I know, you know, lobbyists have a bad name, but the reality is if you don't have someone at the state that is helping your cause and, and you know, of course, we're one of a number of counties that is paying for the one lobbyist we use. Um, but you need to make sure there, there's so much money, particularly right now, the state has a ton of money. But the problem is, is you know, you got to get in line and you have to apply for grants and you have to make sure you're there and ready when you know the money's available so we're working with the lobbyists as well as a grant writing firm to try to tap into that have you guys and i was going to ask have you guys got any sort of report from them on or, or is there anything available to the public on how successful they are in generating money for infrastructure projects in the county well so far and and we just have had this lobbyist now for i would say i guess it's been a little over six months maybe so it's pretty early we did, we did secure $750,000 for the Riverview Park through, and the lobbyists helped with that. So, I mean, we, I think in my mind, we've already, it's, she's already been paid for at least for this, this last year. Um, but um, that is something we're gonna keep pushing for and you're right, we need to make that you know, public. Bob, any updates on economic development? So economic development, a, it's a big issue. And um, again, like I said, we, you know, revenue is a huge issue for the county. I, I mentioned this before. Um, basically we get, because of Prop 13 and it's very complicated, but this, uh, San Diego County gets 11 cents on the dollar of property tax. So that's all we get. Um, there's some counties that can get 30 or 40 cents on the dollar. We get 11 cents. So, um, that means that our the revenue we come, we have coming in the general fund is, is pretty limited. So that's why we're trying to get economic development in the, we're talking about the unincorporated areas of the county, um, so that we have business, commercial, you know, uh, industrial development that will bring not just jobs, but sales tax to the unincorporated areas of the county to help supplement the revenue we're getting. So that's why, you know, projects, and I know it's very controversial, but a project like Strada Verde or Betabel uh, or, you know, developments that are on 101, um, you know, which for the life of me, I don't understand why anyone in Hollister would care if there's a gas station on 101. But, but those kind of projects are really critical to the county because most of the, the development that you can think of that we have in our community is in the city of Hollister. So that, that goes to the city of Hollister, which is great for them, but it doesn't come to the county. And so uh, economic development is huge. Um, we've tried to, we've streamlined um, 
However you feel about it, it's legal. We stream, streamline the process for cannabis growing. We hope that that may become a bigger industry for us. Um, we're doing other things to try to attract you know, business development. We're working with the Business Council of the EC to, um, to try to bring in businesses from um, out, of, you know, out of town. Um, there is, as you may know, there's an initiative that's being put forth right now, once again, by the people from over in Aromas. Uh, I can tell you if that initiative passes and it makes everything that, you know, in order to bring in any new business development in the county, if it has to go to a vote of the people, that will just absolutely kill business development in, in San Mateo County, in the unincorporated areas of the county. Uh, it would be devastating to the county. So, you know, if, if you want to see more services and more revenue coming in to pay for those services, I would strongly suggest that you um, work hard to defeat that initiative, which we're going to see on the ballot in November. So, anyway, other questions? Bill. Uh, did you make a comment with respect to the library and also with respect to Right. So the library is one of the services, you know, that I'm talking about. And, you know, we have a library that was built, you know, back in the 60s when we were eight or 9,000 people. And now we're um, in the city, we're over 40,000. And Samuel County, we're close to 65,000. So we badly need to expand or rebuild the library. Um, I think there are, you know, there's there seems to be a lot of strong will in the on the part of the board to try to do something there. We just applied for a, a, a state grant for $10 million that we're hopeful that we'll get. Um, and then we have to match with 5 million, but we're, we're looking for ways to move forward with something with the library. Um, but we need to, you know, put together our plans, figure out how we're gonna do that. So we have what they call shovel ready project so that when the state comes along and they're looking for you know where they can put money, they've got something in Samuel County that they can put money there for. So we're working on that. Um, as Bill mentioned, you know, facility, county facilities are, are an issue. We have a lot of county facilities, the old jail, they're in a, you know, a, a disrepair. And, um, and frankly, we just gotta find money, but it, it's tough. And, you know, it's all we're competing for. It. And, and if we found a ton of money, we'd probably put it to roads before we put it to some of the other, you know, older facilities. But that's a, that's, those are trade-offs we gotta look at. Anything else? That's it? And, and, uh, and I'm not running. So this is my <laughs> swan song. I'm a lame duck this year, but I'll, I'll work hard for the next 10, 10 months or so. So thank you. Awesome.